Okay, so if you understand this one algebra rule, then solving this equation should be very easy. Matter of fact, let's take a look at the problem. So we have 1 over 12 to the 2x power, and this is equal to 12, and we're trying to solve for x. Now we do have a multiple choice question here, and let's take a look at our answers. So x is equal to a 1, b 2, c negative 1 half, and d 4. Now feel free to use a calculator, but if you can figure this out, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'll show you the correct answer in just one second. Then, of course, I want to walk through and explain this critical algebra rule that is necessary to solve this problem. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help learning math, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. All right, so here again is our equation. We have 1 over 2, or sorry, 1 over 12 to the 2x power, and this is equal to 12. Again, we're trying to solve for x. Let's go to take a look at the right answer. x is equal to c negative 1 half. Now, if you got this right, you definitely get a happy face and an A plus for your knowledge of how to solve uh, algebraic equations. Now, what we have here really is what we call an exponential equation because we have an exponent. I'm sorry, we have a variable in the exponent spot. So, for example, if I was trying to solve like 2 to the x power is equal to 10, well, again, the variable that I'm looking to solve for is in the exponent spot. So uh, this would be what we call an exponential equation. Now, typically, solving these type of equations, uh, you need to use logarithms. And you really could use logarithms to solve this problem, but there is a much, much easier approach, especially if you understand this one critical algebra rule. All right, but uh, before we get going here, let's just take a look at this question. And if some of you are saying, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I don't even know how to do this. Uh, what if you came across this on a test or quiz or an exam for those of you that uh, are still math students? Well, just take a guess, right? Just go ahead and just take a random guess. But uh, what's even better, okay, is try to kind of maybe eliminate some of these guesses. Now, uh, really, there uh, is no reason why you should get any multiple choice equation problem wrong if you know how to check solutions into an equation. In other words, here, if x is equal to our first choice, uh, a, which is uh, x is equal to 1, well, we just simply plug in uh, x or replace this x with 1, right? So what would that give us? This would give us 1 over 12. So this would be 2 times 1. Okay, so that's 1 over 12 squared. So that would be what? 1 over 4, 144. So is 1 over 144 equal to 12? Well, obviously not. Okay, so you can just kind of go through uh, these choices and check them one by one. And if you solve the problem that way, that's fantastic. But let's suppose this wasn't a multiple choice question. Well, then you, you simply just need to know the math. All right, so once again, we do have an exponential equation. And let me just show you real quick before we get into uh, how to solve this problem is if you had something like 2 to the x is equal to 10. Okay, Again, we have an exponential equation. And pretty much anytime you have an exponential equation, you need to be thinking about using logarithms to solve. And if you have a logarithmic equation, you need to be thinking about uh, writing that log or logarithmic, e logarithmic equation as an exponential function. That's because exponential functions and logarithmic functions are inverse functions of one another. All right, but uh, this particular problem, uh, this one that we're dealing with here, we can use this one algebra rule uh, to solve this pretty easily. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and get into that right now. Okay, so here is our problem. And again, uh, we are looking to solve for the variable in the exponent spot. But something uh, that comes to mind here, or hopefully all of you are kind of seeing, is that we have 12, right? So both, uh, both sides of the equation have this 12 in common, right? So that might be a 
a good clue in terms of maybe uh, solving this problem. And actually, you can solve this problem pretty easily without a calculator. All right, so let's go ahead and get into it right now. So let's suppose here is our actual problem, but let's just make up an easier problem here just for a quick second. So what if I had 12 to the x is equal to 12 to the third power? Now, this is an exponential equation right here, right? Because the variable is in the exponent spot. Now, we don't need to take the logarithm of both sides. For those of you that understand how to solve equations using logarithms, you would go log, uh, log of 12x is equal to log of 12 to the third power. And then you would just kind of go from there. And if you don't understand this, well, no big deal because, uh, again, we're going to be using basic algebra to solve this problem. But let's just kind of look at this from a common sense standpoint, okay? So 12 to the third power, okay, whatever value this is, and if this is equal to 12 to the x power, well, what must x be equal to, okay? If we're saying that uh, these things here are the same, and that's what this uh, symbol means in mathematics, right? Where basically, uh, this is an equation. We're saying that the left-hand side is equal uh, to the right-hand side. It's almost like, uh, think of this as a scale, right? They weigh the same amount. So if that's the case, and uh, they both have the same base, 12, again, when we're talking about powers, we have two parts. We have the exponent and the base. The entire thing is a power. Well, uh, hopefully, all of you say uh, might be saying to yourself, hey, Mr. YouTube Math MathMan, that x must be equal to 3, okay, in order for this to be a true statement. And that would be correct, right? So the only thing that makes this statement true is 12 to the third is equal to 12 to the third. No other statement like 12 to the fifth or 12 squared would make this true. And again, that is a review of what the solution is, okay? The solution to an equation is the value such that when you plug it in and replace that variable, it makes that statement true. And in this case, it's x is equal to 3. But this was very easy because the bases were the same. Okay, now if I change the base here, well, then we got a different situation. If I had 7x is equal to 12 uh, to the third power, well, then we have to use some fancy math in order to solve this problem. All right, but uh, again, here, 12 to the x is equal to 12 to the third, super easy to solve. And over here, we both have like a 12 involved. Now, the one thing that you need to know about a number, like let's just say 12 by itself, you might be saying, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I don't see a power here. It's just 12 by itself. No, no, that's not the case. Uh, any number, when you don't see an exponent, really has a 1 as its exponent. All right, so 12 to the first power is uh, 12. All right, so this is a good clue here on the strategy that we want to take, right? So we kind of want to see if we could take this equation and maybe uh, write it in such a way where we can have uh, two 12s as the basis and then just simply equate the exponents and we can but we have to understand this simple algebra formula or rule right here matter of fact this is what we call a property and some of you might be saying mst to math man this doesn't look too complex it looks a little fancy uh, to me it looks a little difficult well actually uh, this is a property of powers and exponents and uh, when you first start learning about powers and exponents, in other words, like 2 to the 3rd times 2 to the 5th, when you're working with um, powers and exponents, okay, you got to know the properties. And there's like a handful of them. There's like five of them. You have to know when you can multiply powers, when you can divide powers, when you can take a power to a power, and some other things as well. Hopefully, you're familiar with this, but this is the one that we need. Uh, for this situation. So it's a to the negative n is equal to 1 over a to the n. This is a negative exponent property. And this particular property or rule is highly confused uh, amongst uh, algebra students. But I'm going to explain it to you in a simple way because we're going to need this in order to make this problem uh, nice and easy. Okay, so here is the property or formula or rule. a to the negative n is equal to 1 over a to the n. So what is this saying? Well, we have a power where a is the uh, base, and it's to a negative exponent. a to the negative n is equal to 1 over a to the n. So let's just follow the pattern in this simple example right here. 
So x to the negative 2 is equal to what? Well, the rule says anytime you have a power and you have a negative exponent, like right here, x to the negative 2, it says this is equal to 1, okay, so we'll put that 1 right here, over a to the n. It's the same power, but this negative becomes a positive. So that's what we have right here. So x to the negative 2 is equal to 1 over x uh, squared. Okay, so this is a simple illustration of this rule. And let's take a look at uh, a few more examples here. And if you understand this, well, then you're going to understand how to solve this equation without the use of logarithms. Okay, so let's take a look again at another example. So here is our property, our formula for negative exponents. So a to the negative n is equal to 1 over a to the positive n. So this works with numbers as well. So 3 to the negative 2 power is equal to 1 over 3 squared. Okay, so basically you're just simply following the pattern. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at this situation now. Okay, now here uh, we do have a negative exponent, but it's down in the denominator. So let's see if you can figure this out. Matter of fact, if you want to kind of test your uh, math skills, your fraction skills, let's see if you can um, use this property. Okay, what you're, what you're going to do here is use this property on the denominator. Okay, so go ahead and write the denominator uh, using this property. And now we have 1 divided by what this is going to be equal to. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look what this looks like. So this is going to be a little bit different than the other previous examples. So 1 over x to the negative 2 is equal to 1 over... Now here, this is like a little problem within itself. So x to the negative 2, remember, is 1 over x squared, right? So again, we're going from negative to positive, but we've got to put this thing over 1. Now here, this is a complex fraction. This is 1. This fraction bar is the division operator. Uh, so we're going to take that 1 divided by this stuff right here. So let's go ahead and do that right now. So 1 over x to the negative 2 power is equal to 1 over... 1 to the x to the positive 2 power, x squared, and that is equal to 1, okay, divided by 1 over x squared. Now, how do we multiply, how do we divide fractions? Well, we're going to flip the fraction to the right of the division uh, symbol, so this becomes multiplication, and we're going to flip this guy upside down. So 1 over x squared becomes x squared over 1, or just x squared. So now we have 1 times x squared, which, of course, is x squared. So we did all this fancy work basically to understand the following, okay? That 1 over x to the negative 2 power is equal to x squared. So I'm going to teach you a super easy way to understand this property of uh, negative exponents. This is a critical property. Again, it's highly confused uh, amongst algebra students, but let's go ahead and take a look at an easy way to understand this property. Okay, so here we go. Anytime you want to uh, change the sign of a power. Okay, so for example, right here I have x to the negative 3. If I want to change the sign to x to the, a positive 3 power, I can. All I have to do is move it to the opposite side of the fraction bar. Okay, so if you pick up a power, and we're talking about a fraction here, and we move it to the opposite side of the fraction bar, the sign of the exponent changes. So this is going to become x to the positive 3 power. All right, so how about this one right here? If I wanted to change the sign of y to the fourth, this isn't in the denominator. We'll just put it up in the numerator. And when I do that, it's going to be y to the negative fourth power. So anytime I want to go from a negative to a positive or positive to a negative in terms of an exponent, I simply can. And this expression right here is equivalent to this expression right here. It's really up to uh, me in terms, or you, uh, in terms of how you want to write this. So now let's kind of go back over here and take a look at this problem. So 1 over x to the negative 2. Well, what we want to do is move this x to the negative 2 up to the numerator, and it becomes positive. Okay, so that's x to a positive 2, x squared over 1. All right, so if you understand this, then you have everything you need to know in order to solve this equation that we are talking about. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started on it. So here is our problem, and we kind of want to make it make it like this, right? So back to this simple problem. If we can get the bases the same, okay, if we can uh, have a 12 over here and a 12 over here, then we can just equate the exponents. 
So now, what do you think we can do in order to get the bases the same? We have 1 over 12 to the 2x is equal to 12. Well, we can easily get the bases the same by moving this thing upstairs, all right? Upstairs, i.e. the numerator, and we can use this property of negative exponents. Okay, so all I can, do, all I need to do is put this up in the numerator, okay? When I do that, the sign's gonna go from 2x to negative 2x, and that is going to be over one. Okay, so if you understand that, well then you can see here, we are ready to do some simple algebra to solve this problem. Okay, so we have 12 to the negative 2x is equal to 12. So let's go ahead and take the next step, which of course is have you quickly subscribe to my YouTube channel. Now, uh, there is a word in my vocabulary, and hopefully it's in yours, and that is help. Okay, I'm definitely not shy to ask for help, and hopefully you are not shy to ask for help as well, and hopefully you have this word in your vocabulary as well. That is goal, okay? So you need to set goals, and uh, hopefully, if you're learning mathematics, your goal is to really understand math, okay? Really comprehend it. And if your goal is to like, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, uh, in all honesty, I just want to pass my math class and never do math again in my life. Well, that's fine, okay? I don't have any problem with that. But don't sell yourself short. You should always have the highest level goals because, it, you know, uh, you're capable of really being successful in math. But if you kind of keep your goals too low, well, typically if it's like, hey, I don't want to, I want to pass my math class with a C plus. Well, I've seen students that have an attitude just try to kind of squeak through with the bare minimum. What do they end up usually getting? Like a D plus. <laughs> I never want to do that. So shoot high, aim high in terms of your goals. And my goal, okay, specifically is to reach as many people as I possibly can, but I need your help. And if you are struggling with mathematics and you need help, well, check out my full main math courses. You can find links to those in the description of this video. And what we're talking about here is like Algebra 1 stuff, okay? Algebra 1 level um, kind of uh, the topics, if you will. But as soon as you kind of get into logarithms, exponential functions, those type of things, then you may want to check out like my Algebra 2 or my pre-calculus course. And for those of you that are not math students, check out my Math Skills Rebuilder course. All right, so thanks for giving me a little bit of time to explain uh, the reasons I do what I do. So hit that subscribe button and that notification bell so you can get my latest videos. All right, so now really not much to do here. So we have 12 to the negative 2x is equal to 12. But remember, you might be saying, hey, where's the exponent over here, Mr. YouTube Math Man? Well, just put a 1 up there. Okay, so we have 12 to the negative 2x is equal to 12 to the first power. So now we can equate the exponents. So negative 2x must be equal to 1 in order for this statement to be true. So let's go ahead and just uh, set negative uh, 2x is equal to 1 in a simple algebraic equation. So we have negative 2x is equal to 1. So to solve for x, all I have to do is divide both sides of the equation by negative 2. So x is equal to negative 1 half. All right, so again, uh, more properties that you need to know about working with powers and exponents. And uh, there is a huge amount of properties and exponents at the algebra level and beyond. So you've got to really understand these rules. But hopefully, um, for some of you out there, if you've been confused with this particular property, hopefully I made it easier for you to understand. Okay, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.